Hello everyone, today I want to talk about the new upcoming character Alekino and hopefully have you figure out if she fits your playstyle and team composition, so ultimately if this character is worth your wishes. And buckle up, this skill kit is wild, it's gonna be a longer video than usual to say the least. First of all, this character makes use of the Bond of Life mechanic, so allow me to quickly remind everyone what it actually does. Bond of Life is a negative status effect which absorbs healing on your characters and it can be removed by simply healing more HP than the effect is worth. For example, if a Bond of Life worth 20% of a character's max HP is applied, healing them for 20% of their HP will clear this debuff. And the last thing to know is, this effect also stacks, if a character gets Bond of Life worth 20% of the HP twice back to back, it will just add up to 40%. Now that we cover that, we can move on to quickly cover her skill kit. Alekino actually has a very intricate normal attack skill. As long as she has a Bond of Life value greater than 20% of her max HP, she gains a Pyro Infusion and increased normal attack damage. Using normal attacks then consume 6.5% bond of life for each attack used until it is cleared. Also holding down the button results in a movement similar to Mona's or Ayaka sprint before performing the usual charge attack. The elemental skill applies a status effect called blood directives to targets in range, it ticks for some damage but most importantly this status can be cleared by hitting targets with a charge attack or the elemental burst skill, which then grants Bond of Life to Alekino worth 40% of her max HP up to a maximum of 80%, so two blood directives can be cleared per usage of the elemental skill. The burst, it's just some AoE damage and healing for Alekino, and most importantly it resets the cooldown of her elemental skill. As for passives, the first one 40% pyro damage bonus and it prevents all incoming healing for Alekino aside from her burst skill, it is actually the only way to heal this character while in combat. The second one upgrades her blood directives to blood depth use after 5 seconds which essentially just increases the amount of bond of life granted from 40% to 70% and the same amount is granted when an enemy with blood directive is defeated. And this last one is just 20% all resistances based on Alakino's attack, the maximum 20% is reached at 3000 attack. I know that's kind of a lot, but playing her will be kind of simple. You will open the fight with her elemental skill so that the blood directives will be upgraded to blood depth use while you use your other characters like Jing Shou, Kazuha and Bennett for example. Once you get back to Alekino, you will then press the elemental burst skill to clear the blood depths and receive the bond of life to set up the pyro infusion. Then you can use 7 or 8 normal attacks until you lose your infusion again, at which point you rinse and repeat. Elemental skill, rotate through the rest of your team, burst skill with Alekino into normal attacks. Some small details here are, her elemental skill has 30 seconds cooldown baseline, so Alekino's burst skill at 15 seconds cooldown is super important. They basically designed her skill kit in a way to only have the elemental skill available at the beginning of a fight to get the first rotation going. After that it has to be reset with the burst skill literally every time, just to have a good rotation even if you don't need the healing. In that sense, Alekino is not quite like Utah where you can get away with only using the elemental skill without having to worry about energy to get her burst skill back in time. In my opinion, she feels more like Raiden. Again, open with the elemental skill, rotate through your teams, burst skill into normal attacks and whenever you don't have energy, well, it's depressing, nothing you can do about it. The other thing is obviously, yes, Alekino cannot be healed by other characters like Bennett, which might feel a little weird at first, but it makes perfect sense. She does need her bond of life for the Pyro Infusion and doesn't want it to be cleared literally instantly by external healing. Her build is fairly straightforward, the usual crit crit damage, attack, in her case pyro damage bonus and 2 to 300 elemental mastery for the extra melt or vaporize damage is always nice. Energy recharge is super important, but kind of hard to predict, it's something to be tested, so I can see this going up to maybe even 200%. Keep in mind, you can only use her elemental skill once per rotation, guaranteed, that has to be enough to get the burst skill back. Her burst skill is super important, so again, I cannot overstate how important energy recharge is on this character. 
Then next weapon, there are some really good core style options. For a Vaporize team, obviously Dragon's Bane, if you want to be super safe with energy, Favonius Lance, and if you happen to have the event weapon Missive Windspear, it also is a very nice stat stick. Then for artifacts, again, straightforward, just Gladiator set. And then for this slot, Elemental Mastery is great, but hard to come by, so attack is also very nice. And again, maybe even Energy Recharge is something to be seen after testing her. Then here, Pyro Damage bonus guaranteed, and crit or crit damage in the last slot, whichever one balances your stats better. Though keep in mind, she gets a lot of extra crit damage for her Ascension, so crit rate might actually turn out to be the better stat balance. As for team compositions, Arlequino is a Pyro main DPS, so aside from utility characters, you want to pair with Cryo or Hydro characters to go for the usual gameplay of Melt or Vaporize. And to start us off, I really want to cover some noticeable anti-synergy first, and it's Farina or Bennett, you can definitely play them in a team like this. It's super high risk reward, it's a nice high damage output team, but Arlequino cannot be healed, so healers like Bennett don't do too much in terms of sustain. So shield characters like Zhongli, Diona or Layla will be your best friends if you want to keep Arlequino alive. Aside from this, obviously a great utility character is Farina, but she literally sucks the life out of Arlequino with her elemental skill and she can only recover it with her burst skill. So again, high risk, high reward. The main characters to enable Vaporize would be Xingxiu or Yelan, you could even play them together. Yelan does benefit a lot from the Hydro Resonance. A fun little thing to try out would be a emblem set sub DPS Ayato, just to throw in the burst skill for the extra Hydro application and the normal attack damage bonus for Alekino. But you almost certainly will have to play double Hydro characters just to get enough energy going for Ayato. And other than that, if you only want to play one of them, you can switch out either of them, Jingxiu or Yelan, and then switch in another utility character like Kazuha for the buffs, Sucrose for the buffs, and then throw in a shield character to sustain your team. So for example, C4 Layla will be great for the extra normal attack, C6 Diona for the extra elemental mastery, or just Zhongli in general, because he's just a good utility character with the shield. And then you could even throw in something like Yunjin for the extra normal attack buffs and Geo Resonance. And again, for Geo Resonance, Albedo and Elemental Mastery buff he provides. But Albedo also makes the Vaporous a little bit inconsistent with his extra off field Geo application. It's a little bit of a downside there to keep in mind. And especially if you use Diona or Layla as sustained character, you can throw in a Rosaria and make it a full-on melt team. And of course, she also provides a lot of utility with the extra crit rate buffs. Then you can finish it up with, again, a Kazu or a Sucrose pick. Or even quite interesting would be a Nahida pick for the extra elemental mastery buffs, but also to apply the burning effect to make it essentially a melt burn team. And then, aside from this, if you don't want to play Diona or Layla, you can go for the usual Zhongli pick and any of these utility characters again, also with the Geo Resonance option. Alright, we made it to the end. I hope this was somewhat helpful to figure out if this character appeared to you. I think she will be very strong, but also kind of a special taste. There are just characters like this, for example Ganyu, some people don't like to aim with her, and the same is true with this character. The unique thing about her is obviously that she can't be healed, which raises questions about survivability. Usually I say play the free trial to figure it out for yourself, but I don't think this is an accurate representation in this case, because usually they are super easy. So if you take her to Abyss 12, for some people it might just end up being the case that she just dies over and over again. So I would just advise you to wait a little bit and see what other people upload here on YouTube to see how she performs in that content. Speaking of which, I will get Alekino, so stay tuned for that. In fact, I think this is one of the most unique characters by far. I'm very excited to play her. So until then, have fun and bye bye.